started this uh, thought about stolen bases. We haven't done an episode on stolen bases, uh, which kind of surprises me, at least dedicated to, to that. And, um, you know, we, we know that people are running more, and, and, I, and I started thinking about, well, is it really helping teams, you know, win more games? And I noticed this morning, uh, as uh, I'm recording just be on the 4th of July weekend, that six of the top 11 stolen base teams have losing records. So clearly, just stealing bases isn't enough to s signify a good team. Right, but I would say the team, I think the Arizona Diamondbacks last year were the second best stolen base team in the National League. And their ability to run was a very big part of their offense and why they were a, a successful team. So I don't think it's... They also had uh, Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly. Right, right, but, <laughs> right, but offensively, you know, stolen bases was a big part of their identity, so... I wonder if it's all, I mean, immediately I would think about something like this where it's like, well, I guess it would make sense that teams that lose a lot would also run a lot because teams that run a lot are probably really, really young. You've probably got a really young team that's got a ton of young guys that are more likely to steal bases up and down the lineup. But since they're young, they're not going to essentially perform as well. And, and, and maybe that's a way to cover up your overall lack of hitting because you don't, you're not expecting big time hitting in situations because you don't have those kinds of guys. So anytime you get somebody on by a walk or anything like that, you've got to kind of get into scoring position because it might take, you know, you might only get one more hit. Right, because if you think about the last team that really won a World Series off the back of, you know, timely hitting in the stolen base, I think I'd have to go back to the... 2015 Kansas City Royals. They were really the that's last. That's a good comp. That's I like probably that. the last team I can think about that were like base stealing was a core part of their identity as World Series champions. Because every other team you're looking at, and what were they? Massive, massing, mass, massive, mashing lineups. Right. Or really, really good starting pitching rotations. That Royals team's a good one because, you know, they, they beat what I thought was a better Met team that year. Um, simply just outplaying them, you know, at, at every stretch of the uh, of the game, particularly on base running. Right, um, able and to take the extra base, which I, I think is interesting because if we went back, I always kind of thought it was weird that all of the stolen base records were from, you know, modern day guys. Because when you look back, I mean, there was a guy back in like 1887 that I think stole like 138 bases or something. So, kind of, I mean, it's interesting when you look at the history of the stolen base, how we got here, because... It wasn't always just taking first and second. And I think that's right. We think of Ricky Henderson's 130 steals as the modern-day record, but if you go back into what you like to call funny baseball time, that's where you know, all the stolen base records you know, sort of exist in terms of teams. Right? You had teams back in the 1880s stealing 500 bases in a season, 580 bases or something like right. that. They right. were just four a game. Right, but that's because they <laughs> counted stealing bases completely differently back then, which is something I never knew because it wasn't traditionally a guy took a lead off of first base. I don't even know if they took leads back then, but it wasn't a guy taking a lead off of first base and then while the pitcher delivers the pitch to home, he goes to second and steals the that, base. That would count. Right, but they weren't doing that. That well, was Not only that. No, no, it was also the guy was on first base, a ball is hit to the outfield, and he goes to third. Right, and they gave him the base between second and third as and a stolen, stolen base. base, which actually, in terms of evaluating a player's ability, that's not a bad statistic to have, taking the extra base. Right, right. it's actually kind of interesting because it would kind of let you know who are fast guys, who are fast guys that are really good base runners, and who are maybe slower guys who are still good base runners. Because you can see now, part of that is opportunity, because obviously your ability to take the extra base is dependent on the guys behind you in the lineup. But over the course of a season, and especially over the course of time, that's going to tell you who's probably better at it than other people. So, right, right. And, and I think today, when Major League Baseball made the rule changes to encourage more running, I'm going to say that I think now that I, that I really think about it, they did it because they wanted to have fewer strikeouts. <laughs> and, and here's what I mean by that. Okay. Too many, too many strikeouts, so having more outs on the bases at least would generate fewer strikeouts because they wanted more action in the game, obviously. And whether the guy gets caught or whether he makes it, it's more action than watching a guy strike out. And I, I think also expanding the size of the base specifically was something for the players because you know what I've not seen this last season and a half? 
are the, all of those jammed hand injuries from guys sliding into bases. Huh. Okay. That was specifically one of the reasons why they were going for that change is that the players said by making the bases bigger, we're not going to have that as happen as often. And it actually has definitely helped. I didn't think of it that way. So I thought when they made the bases bigger, I thought, well, the first thing was so that the, the first baseman and the runner had a less of a chance of a collision at first right, base. Right. That was, but they couldn't make one base bigger and the other one's not bigger. Right, but so was, they had to make them all was, bigger. It was a lot for sliding into second base. Mm-hmm. You remember how many guys used to jam their hands and get bad wrist injuries sliding into now second? Now they wear the big oven mitts out right, there. Now they wear the big oven mitts, and with the bigger bases, there's less of a chance of them sliding into their hands into the player's feet, which would also cause a lot of the injury because they were hitting the guy's leg instead of the base like they were expecting. So this has really helped a lot, and I think that was another reason. But I do also think encouraging people to run because the stolen base had basically completely fallen out of favor because teams look at it's such it's such an interesting thing how it's evolved where teams were always afraid of caught stealings it was a big deal right well the whole thing with what like 75 percent i don't know you hear different things but now teams can actually really narrow in on what that number is that's acceptable as a caught stealing rate to them and the moment the league average falls below whatever that perceived rate is teams are just going to stop running unless they have specialty guys that are way so above and beyond what the close to league average is that they'll let them do it but that's how you get those seasons where like you get one guy in your team with 30 steals and nobody else has 10 right 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 and and i think the you know it shows the athleticism of the player so i understand from the standpoint of major league baseball watching ellie de la cruz who leads the major leagues in stolen bases this year with 43 here on uh, on this on sunday um and he actually has more stolen bases himself than the entire san francisco giant team right. and, and just think about <laughs> which is 30th at 30 to, stolen to bases. give an ex- to give how much this has changed ellie de la cruz has 43 stolen bases so far in 2024 that's two more than John Birdie had in 2022 when he led Major League Baseball. So you can immediately see the impact that these the base changes has had, like the, the amount of running that it has encouraged. And I, I think it's interesting because it's not as if stealing bases doesn't have enough impact on your offense. You do score more runs. When point you're three, though. Right, right. So this <laughs> is for every stolen base, successful stolen base. It's point three runs. So th- think about that. You need to steal three bases to have one run, basically, almost to get one run of use. But but at the same time, successfully, by the th- way, that, right. But if you're doing that consistently, that's going to add up over the course of a season. If you're Led La Cruz and you steal like seventy something bases over the course of a season, that's twenty runs you've effectively added to your team for your team that's that's a pretty meaningful amount of runs that's going to change the course of a bunch of games at the same time it doesn't uh we, we were watching uh the Mets play yesterday and there was two out, uh there was one out and mm-hmm. a runner on second base it was uh, Harrison Bader and he tries to sneak steal third base and he gets thrown out by like a lot for a right. guy who's a pretty good base runner well the the old adage is you never make the first out or the third out at third base, so he did that. He made the second. They were trying to get the third base with one out so they could score the run on less than a hit. Um, but I think that players, he's been caught six times this year. So at a certain point, you got to say, okay, this is not working. And what I'm trying to say is, is, is that you know, it, even if you have an 80% success rate, I'm, I can understand more now after looking at the data why managers are like, yeah, the stolen base is kind of overrated. Right, right. And, and 80% <laughs> success rate, I understand, that's really good. Carlos really Beltran good. holds the major league record for his career with a stolen base percentage of uh, 864. So he was successful 86% of the time, and he is the best that was and ever. And he stole a lot of bases. Right, and Tim Raines is second with 847. So that's and you had to have a minimum of three hundred attempts. So that's not obviously counting guys that like maybe stole twenty bases in their career. And so they because like we also see that, and I'm glad they've added catchers in difference, which I think has also affected stolen base totals. Because for a long time, guys would get free steals in the late innings of blowout games where it didn't matter they were stealing second base because the catcher would just let them go, and oh, that's an extra stolen base for me, even though it really wasn't because the team just let them have it. And I think that teams, because they let guys go on that, I think that's a signification that they're really not that worried about the stolen base. Well, that, that's also contextual because you're only having that happen in games where the guy getting True. the second base doesn't really mean a lot. Because that's something that we don't really think about in the context of a baseball game, that a stolen base has value proportional to what the current score is. If the score is 15 to 1, you can st- the guy. Can- oh, you shouldn't be stealing. That's an unwritten rule now. Well, now you're, you're, if you're, you're piling da- on. Uh, well, no. If you're, what if you're down? If you're down 15-1. Well, then you're crazy to steal. 
Right. <laughs> but if you're L.A. De La Cruz, you're really good well, at then, it. Well, then you should be running right. always. But, but <laughs> he, are his runs at that point, his steal and bases, are probably not adding point three runs per game because it's just completely... Like, it's interesting to think about, like, how, yes, he's going to score more, but it's not really... Impact. It's not impacting the final score. Right. It, it might... It may, oh, okay, now they're going to lose 15-4 instead of 15-2. Like... Yeah. Did that really change anything? And so I think it's interesting where he's still getting a stolen base in that credit, but he's basically be- being allowed to have them because it can't really impact the game that much because of how each individual batter is the only way you can score a run. And, and stealing bases, you know, there are, as you say, more uh, important situations than others to steal bases. I, would, I, I think that would be a really interesting metric to start, start tracking is the effectiveness of steals is like stealing bases in games that have a certain, like when you're stealing the base, the score is within a certain range. Like if I'm stealing a base and we're only down one run or less, that to me is a much more, more meaningful play. Much more meaningful play than if we're down four runs or more. So um, I, I think I'm going to talk about the maybe the most famous stolen base, if, at least if you're a Red Sox fan, right, in, in Major League history. Well, how do you have a famous stolen base? Um, because um, it, it impacted not only a game, it impacted the entire series. So the current manager of the Dodgers, right, Dave Roberts? Yes. Okay, he's got that right. Um, you know, in, in the 2004 series, the Yankees are up three games to none. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's, it's the ninth inning of the game. The Red Sox are down to, I think, their final out. And they, they, Dave Roberts it comes in as a pinch runner. And everybody in the stadium knew he was going to try to run. Right. He was there for that, only that's, one reason. That's literally why he is on this team. So uh, he had stolen 38 out of 41 uh, bases that year so they were high expected and it was a very tense battle to try to keep him at first and finally not only did he steal second base and ended up scoring a run uh that i think tied the game uh the red sox won that game on a david ortiz home run in extra innings and then went on to win not only that game they won the next three games and became the first team to come from three games to o down against the yankees to beat the yankees and then they went on and won the world series so that singular play I think could be looked at. I think if you're a Red Sox fan, you're going, yeah, that kind of like changed everything. Right, right. Because on the like two pitches later, Bill Mueller singles. Bill Miller, right? Bill Miller singles and scores Roberts to tie the game in the ninth inning. Yep, yep. And so this was such a big. I mean, that's that's why that seal was such a big deal because by getting to second base, he made it so that a, a hit tied the game, and then they win in extras on the Ortiz home run. And of course, and this is all off of Mariano Rivera. Who was, I think, the only unanimous... The greatest closer in right, the history the of baseball. Closer. Hello. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of wild to think about. So like, it, that, that, I, I think that sort of, for me, is the number one steal. I think I, the other one that I remember, and I don't know what impact it had on the final score, I should know, is Jackie Robinson sliding home, stealing home, uh, and Yogi Berra jumping up and down because they called him safe and and and, uh, and yogi still you know at the, even like 30 years later was like he was out he was out so you know that was a world because it's in the world series obviously it makes it more impactful right and, and obviously that's such an iconic baseball moment because stealing home i mean of, uh, stealing bases stealing home has a special mystique around it that no other stolen it's, it's the most exciting play in baseball right Oh, I thought that was an inside park the inside the park oh that's I, I was the one that said that too yeah yeah, I think the inside the park home run might slightly, you know, do that only because watching a guy run, you know, all around the bases is pretty cool. Right. There was one this week, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that was cool. But I don't know. Stealing home, there, that may be the most dramatic play in baseball. And it, it doesn't happen very much. And, and I remember I, I've cited that uh, Rod Carew uh, stole home seven times in 1969 in one season. So I'm like, after the guy stole home five times, do you, you think you'd be looking at third base to say, you know, this guy might try it, you know, because he's done it before. Um, and, yeah. and obviously, of stealing home, Jackie Robinson led major league, leads Major League Baseball. He stole home 19 times. But I think the most exciting thing you could do was steal home to win the game. And that, the last time that happened was 1997. It's only happened 35 times. That really surprised me. There was only 35 times in Major League history that somebody has stolen home. Now, this is going back to the 1800s. Right, We're going... and this is, it's only happened four times in the past 50 years. Right, right. Marquise Grissom, who was a very fast base runner right. and a good ball player, stole home in 19... 19... I couldn't believe that it took that long. We're right. talking over 25 years. Yeah, so stolen home, stealing home only accounts for 1.6% of all stolen base attempts. And successful steals of home account for just 0.6 of all successful stolen bases. That's just how 
incredibly rare stealing home is. And I kind of hope that I, I don't remember seeing a guy steal that Marquise Grissom play. No. So I hope somebody does it soon. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I just, and, and I think because everybody's just so more hip to what's going on out there, it's just harder, right? You would probably have to happen um, even even today against a left handed pitcher. Right, right. You're going to need. Ba- whose back is to the third base. Right. And a guy like Ellie De La Cruz needs to get on third base and, and have it be like, okay, I could do it here. And and wasn't it Harper who did uh, did a uh, they did, did a double steal and he ended up stealing home? Uh, yes, you know. And, but it wasn't it wasn't a traditional steal of home. So I think that's why it didn't count. So there is a play that works in certainly in little league. Well, actually, they don't let you steal in little league, so it's the wrong thing. Well, you know, like in, well, in, you, in, just in take, you just take it on past balls. The old the old first and third thing, yes. right? Right. Which now, because of the devaluation of the stolen base, I don't think teams almost ever throw through to second base. There would be no reason. You know, to take the chance on on having that, the guys can do it. They can throw it down a second. It can be cut off by the shortstop or the second baseman coming forward and fire it home to the guy trying to sneak home when the guy's stealing second. But I don't see that play most of the time. You know, they fake and then keep the guy at third base. Right, because it's just it's it really depends on when they're stealing second. Because I think teams are more likely to let the ball go through if there's less than two outs. Because if there's if there's two outs, there's absolutely no reason to throw through and give them the opportunity when the guy can just get himself out at home plate. If I have zero outs, it de- then, then there's just more calculus in terms of who's on first, who's on third, what are the chances of throwing out the guy, what are the chances of a guy getting home. Because there's some guys where I'm like, okay, yeah, you're stealing to get around the double play, but uh, I don't think that guy on third can make it home. Right, and and I think that, you know, the... the uh Stealing the base in general right now is is sort of you know going down in in, 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 in in terms of its overall value. Yet people are stealing more. So I think you will see steals of home. You'll still people try that stuff because you know it, it's it's fun and there's, it's they're sort of encouraged to do it right now. Right, teams are encouraged to do it. We've seen teams be successful, and we do have to remember that we have to look at stolen bases completely differently starting from last season, right? And we're going to have to let these next couple of years go by and build up data because changing the size of these bases has obviously had a dramatic impact. And limiting the pickoff throws, I think, in particular. Right. You throw over it twice, right, because, and you, you're ready to and go. I, and I still <laughs> think pitchers, ha- both pitchers and runners, have not figured out, and they're not gamifying right. the fact that you can only throw over three times in an at-bat. Or it, it, well, like, only twice before the well, third time you got to get him, or he gets the second. Right, right. I don't think teams are taking advantage of that enough, and tr- are sp- not specifically trying to force situations where where teams are up against the fact that like, oh, I can only throw over if I don't if I throw over and don't get him, he gets the base for free. And I'm and I'm I'm shocked at, at sometimes watching pitchers how they don't really even look at first base a lot of the time. Now I don't know if they've got signals with the catcher and the catcher and and and, and teams have adapted uh, by having the catcher snap throw to first base, which doesn't count Way as a throw over. And that makes total sense, right? But that's a much riskier that play, as we've seen even with our Mets. That there's a much higher chance for errors in the ball getting away on that snap throw to first base, or it could hit the guy. Right, right. So it's a much riskier play than just the the soft throw over to first base. To to check them right right so uh yeah the reds lead major league baseball uh, in stolen bases as we as we talk here um and and only a, a, by a few over milwaukee and it's kind of interesting that one team has a losing record and like i said to start you know it's 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 a 50 50 thing just because you got a lot of stolen bases doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be a winning team but look how teams have adapted so the reds right now lead major league baseball with 128 last year they led also with 190 so think about how many more stolen bases they have at this point in the season compared to last right, year. They're, they're going to break whatever they're going to go over 200 for they're sure. They're going to go over 200. And the Brewers and Nationals are right behind them. So we're starting to see teams really adjust. And and I think that the, the Giants, we knew they were going to be. Some teams just are going to be slow plotting teams because there were teams that have always been slow plotting teams. And it just kind of depends on your roster concern. Like the Mets don't steal a ton of bases because – they don't they're have middle of the pack. They're middle of the pack, but that's only because of Lindor and Nimmo. Right, and now Marte's been out. He was the guy who stole and, bases. Doesn't even doesn't even. Right, everybody else in that lineup does not is not even a threat. And I think it becomes a bit of a feeding frenzy when it comes to teams running. Like there was a point in the season where the Mets couldn't throw at anybody. Right, they've they've gotten way better. It's amazing the difference. So that I, I think there are probably other teams that have that kind of like they were so horrible. So teams just started running.
running at will going, well, these guys can't, and, and it was a thing, right? They couldn't throw anybody out, and the teams knew they couldn't. They kept on running. Was, right, I mean, games where the teams would steal seven bases on the Mets, and you can't deny in those games those stolen bases clearly had an impact on the So outcome. if you sense weakness, right, that right. The, the catcher's having a tough time, or the pitcher's taking too long, But or now with Alvarez is, and Torrens in the line, you know, alternating they, And the pitchers catcher. got better. Right. The pitchers got better at holding runs. So all, all things had to happen in order for that improvement to take place. But when they weren't getting it done, the teams are like, oh, here right. we and, go. And, and if teams <laughs> sense that they could just steal on you, they're going to steal on you now. And and so, you know, you talk about Ellie De La Cruz and his uh, 43 steals. So, you know, let's maybe he can get to 80, right? Acuna, you know, had, had that uh, more than that last year. Um, but in order to get to Ricky Henderson's 1,406 career steals, just to give you an idea, right, he'd have to steal 80 bases for the next 13 seasons. Right, right just an <laughs> unbelievable number of bases. Now, but, that happens when you play 22 years right, like I, Ricky Henderson did. But I think what, what, what also that speaks to, and something that probably elite base stealers like Ricky Henderson specifically don't get credit for, is you have to be really good at getting on base. The be- greatest leadoff hitter in right, right, baseball you history. Don't, you don't think because that's going to probably be L.A. De La Cruz's biggest limiting factor is he's not particularly great at getting on base. Right. Well, Ricky was a really good at getting the walk as well as hitting right. the home run. So that was the thing. He was a good hitter and he walked a ton. So his on base was really high. So that's that's the scariest thing a base dealer can do. It's almost not even that he's good at sealing bases. It's that he's good at getting on base. And I, I think I think I don't think De La Cruz has what now maybe Acuna had that a little bit last year. What Ricky did when I watched Ricky play man he get in first base and it's like well here we go it was inevitable yeah, yeah he's going he's going he's going what's he gonna go he's gonna go now he's gonna go in the next one you know he's gonna steal third and ricky was better at stealing third than he was at stealing second and, and today it just seems like teams are not willing to do that and how he did it you know was because he was just a really good reader of the situation we you gotta have speed gotta have athleticism right. all that stuff but his intelligence and his understanding is probably underrated ricky's career on base was 400 yeah and Ellie's this Ellie's having That's a nightmare for a team. Right, right. <laughs> Ellie's co- he's on again. And Ellie's having his best career season ever this year. And he's uh, he's got his best on base uh, for his career, and it's three forty three. He's a career three twenty on base. That's not that's that's, that's not a elite. Huge, <laughs> that's certainly. a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Sixty points is uh, is a huge difference. So you know, I think it's fun to have and he's a really exciting player to watch, and I think Major League Baseball has you know, done a nice job in terms of encouraging something that really doesn't seem to me to have a huge impact on winning baseball games. Now, if Ellie does figure out the batting average and the on base and he gets closer to Ricky's 280 and 400, then he's going to be a player in that bolt. He's going to put up a Ricky Henderson like career. Well, the, the good thing for him is he's still so young, right? So you could see him putting up, you know, 60, 70 plus stolen bases for 10 years. Right, right. You know? And, and when that, you get to 800 stolen bases for a career, then he could start going, wow. Right, because if, if, if he stole 80 for the next 13 years, he'd only be 34. So, or, or 35. And Ricky was amazing at stealing bases, by the way, late into his career. Right. Which is just an amazing in and of itself, that he didn't really lose, you know, too much in the way of speed, and he gained his, you know, experience. Yeah, yeah, Ricky stole 66 bases at age 39 for Oakland. Well, he was slowing down a little. <laughs> but yeah, but he was still, he stole 37 next year for the Mets, and 36 the next year. He stole 31 for the Seattle at, at, in 2008, at age 41. 41 years old. <laughs> so... So, so, so Ellie could totally put together a career like that, but it's going to be predicated on him having the, a- the average and the on base that allows him to get on base enough to generate those opportunities to steal all those bases. But then if you look at the, the, the I think the thing I'll, I'll close with is that if you look at the list of all-time stolen bases, there's nobody who's playing, you know, now that's anywhere near, you know, in the conversation in the top 20 or anything like that. I think that's something that we could very much be cha- talking about differently about 10 years from now when you've got a whole bunch of guys that have only ever played with these new bases. I just sure hope it helps the team win some darn games.